So in this question, we want to verify that this solution does indeed satisfy this differential equation for the case when both L and M are equal to zero. So let's do just that. When L and M are equal to zero, this differential equation becomes sine theta times d d theta of sine theta multiplied by the derivative of the of capital theta, which is the function itself, uh, in terms of d theta, and this is equal to zero. So we want to check that this left-hand side expression is indeed equal to zero for this specific function. So let's do just that. So first of all, we want to differentiate capital theta over here. So let's uh, differentiate capital theta. And then in our case, what we have to do is that we have to differentiate uh, in terms of theta, the natural log of tangent theta over two. So we use the chain rule. First of all, we treat natural log as a whole function, and then when we differentiate natural log of something, we just put that something in the denominator, and then we differentiate tangent theta over two because of the chain rule. And differentiating this, this gives us secant squared theta of the over two, uh, secant squared theta over two, and then we use the chain rule again, so this we need to multiply this by an extra one over two. And we can simplify this term a bit. We can see that tangent theta over two is just sine theta over two divided by cosine theta over 2, and secant squared theta over 2, that's just equal to 1 over cosine squared theta over 2, and then times 1 half. And then you can see that one of these cosines, they cancel out. So in the end, we have a divided by 2 sine theta over 2 cosine theta over 2. So we're going to use the double angle formula uh, for the sine function. So we know that 2 times sine x cosine x is equal to sine 2x. So in this case, we have 2 times sine theta over 2 times cosine theta over 2. So this is actually just equal to sine theta. And so we have found what the derivative of capital theta is. And then we need to multiply this by sine theta. So if we multiply sine theta by d capital theta of d theta, when you multiply sine theta, you just get the constant a. And then now the next thing you want to do is that you want to differentiate this term. So you differentiate this term. And then you see that what we're doing is that we're differentiating a constant, so this is going to be equal to zero. And then in the end, we attach another sine theta over to the left. And then on the right-hand side, nothing happens because we just multiply zero with sine theta. And so there we have it. We have proved, we have shown that this expression, which is the left-hand side expression of the differential equation, is indeed equal to zero for this uh, for this specific expression for big theta of theta. So we have verified that this is indeed a solution to this differential equation. Now the thing is, this equa uh, this solution exists uh, mathematically, definitely. So mathematically, this definitely is a solution to this differential equation. But for physics, it doesn't really help us that much because this is not normalizable. So you can check the case when theta is equal to zero. So when theta is equal to zero, you get tangent of zero. And tangent of zero is equal to zero. And then when you tend towards zero, natural log is going to tend towards negative infinity. And so this is the kind of behavior that would not allow us to normalize the, the solution. And also, uh, there's also more problems when theta is equal to uh, pi. So when theta is equal to pi, you have tangent pi over 2. And then if you'll remember from a tangent graph, a tangent graph looks something like this. And it will tend towards infinity when your argument is pi equal to pi over 2. So in the end, you have natural log of infinity, which is also equal to infinity. So once again, for both of these cases, you're going to get behavior that is not going to allow you to normalize this big theta that you get. So this mathematically is definitely a solution to this differential equation. But then in physics, it's, uh, these are actually useless solutions because they're not normalizable. So in the end, uh, because this is a second order differential equation, we know that there are two sets of solutions. So the first set we know of are the associated Legendre polynomials. So these are the solutions that are normalizable and that we do use in quantum mechanics. And for the second set of solutions, you will get something like this. So for other uh, combinations of M and L, you will get other solutions, but they will all uh, be uh, non-normalizable. And this particular expression will correspond to the case, the specific case when M and L are both equal to zero. So if you have other values of M and L, you will get other solutions uh, that exist mathematically but are actually not normalizable. So we will, we will discard those solutions and we will only uh, consider those solutions uh, that come in the form of associated Legendre polynomials.